Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button and I'm a granite sculptor. Welcome to video number 65 of the Virtual Stone Carbon Apprenticeship. Okay, before I start working on the base, cleaned up, uh, one of the downsides of having a uh, reusable mold, rubber mold, mother and all that stuff, is you got to store it. You have a waste mold you throw away, you got nothing to worry about. So if you don't have any storage space, you, you can still throw a rubber mold away, you just may want to keep it. Um, but uh, I went around the model real quick. I got to make sure that I've got all the stuff brushed off of it. I uh, went over it with a sure form just to clean it up a little bit, square up some of the stuff. It isn't necessary, it's just cosmetic, but it looks good. Uh, and I trimmed off this end over here to make it square, went around the sides. Everything looks pretty good. Now, when you do this and you've got plaster, hydrocal, whatever, left in your tool, you know, in your, in your saw, or whatever, I keep a brass brush to brush everything clean because if you leave that plaster on the tool, it'll rust that edge and it'll, it'll ruin it. You know, don't brush towards the teeth, brush away from the teeth or across the teeth, but try to get it all cleaned out really well and uh, before you put it up because you'll, if you don't, you'll leave plaster in there and then you come back to use it and uh, you may have to take the blade out and clean it. But you come back and find out it's all rusted, it's junk. So get your good brass brush, really fine little brush, and it'll, it'll do well. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, um, got this pretty well cleaned off and blown off. I'm gonna go over it with some gesso. And gesso is, this is the same gesso that you'd prepare a canvas with. Um, if you were painting in order to have a more stable, uh, secure foundation for your paint so your paint doesn't have to fill the canvas. Uh, it's like putting conditioner on wood when you're staining wood uh, or brick or stone or anything else. So this is all pretty good. Some people wait days for this to cure so that it's completely dry. I like to put the gesso on now. I like it to dry a little bit slower. Uh, when, you, when you season wood, when you dry wood, um, the faster it dries, the more likely it is to crack because you'll have differentials in pressure. Uh, as one, one area shrinks while the other area is still large. And so I'd rather put it on to seal it up and have it dry slowly. So, and this is another thing about stone. You've got gesso near stone that we're going to use, so you got to be careful. But uh, this will also even the surface up, and it'll help with that differential I talked about with uh, being able to see how the stone looks, those, the clay versus the plaster versus the stone. And uh, you can just put this on pretty thick. You want to get it sealed up really well. And... Uh, and then after you pointed it, uh, it's, you'll end up having a lot of points that you've marked on here with your pencil. And if you've gessoed it, uh, or if you hadn't gessoed it yet, you can go ahead and gesso right over those points. And uh, even if you got to use a more substantial paint, instead of trying to erase all those points, because you'll get mixed up and you'll take a measurement and then you'll double check a point that's an old point, not a new point, and it, it doesn't end well. So we'll get this sealed up, get everything put away, start cutting stone. I gotta tell you, it's pretty nice when you work organized and picked up and you can walk into your studio and you've got something like this to walk into. It's, it's really nice. Um, now I'm gonna, i cast this because I've got a, um, one thing I want to do is submit it for, a, uh, we're going to do the open door, open studio event, and uh, we need a publicity shot. And uh, I figured I'd go ahead and use this one because this is pretty current, you know, it's, <laughs> it's due tomorrow, so uh, this is only a day old. So um, I'm going to stand this up, and I don't want to get into talking about a lot of rigging with, with this work because this is really life and death matters when you're handling something like this four ton stone that this angel's sitting on it won't take much for that to ruin your day 
So you really need to work with somebody hands-on and not just think you can watch a couple YouTube videos and know what to do. But this isn't very heavy. I see a lot of people doing goofy stuff, stupid stuff, just plain dangerous stuff. Um, and if you drop this, it's probably not going to kill you, but it'll probably ruin your day and then some if you worked on it for a number of weeks and you finally cast something in plaster. So I wanted to talk a little bit. I'm going to show you how I rope, rig this one up in order to lift it. Um, one of the big benefits of doing this armature is I have this wooden heel or back that I can use as a, as a pivot, as a fulcrum. I can stand her up, work on this, and this won't break. This won't pop off. If you do it on your, your edge of your plaster, you'll bust off all your corners and everything. This will take a lot of abuse, and this is pretty fragile. So this is really nice to have. Um, and where it's supported in a dovetail, where this has a shoulder to push on, it can't move up. It isn't just reinforced by the by the hydrocal. It's reinforced by this entire armature that goes all the way up through. So, uh, um, and I wasn't going to show you how I do this, just because um, then I... Saw a dumb clip on the YouTube. I think it was a statue of uh, Lenin. And they had just the wire rope around his middle and they pulled it over and slipped and went right up and popped his head off and his head went flying. And there's other videos like that where people don't know how to rig things. So um, let me set this up and uh, we'll put a couple things on. I'm gonna show you how I normally will wrap something like this um, because this is, a very, this is a very awkward piece to handle because it has this amount of weight that's hanging out to the side, so it's gonna to tend to list to this side. It's not just a vertical piece. So, um, let me set the camera up, put some cords on this, and show you what I'm gonna do instead of just having a strap from this corner and a strap from this corner, a, an endless belt that goes up to the hook over her head and then stand her up and have her be able to fall out one side or the other. So, let's set this up. This is what I've done. And this is a really good way. A lot of times you'll see like that statue of Lenin I was talking about this morning. They just cinched it around here and tried picking it up. Now sometimes you can do that if you put wedges in and do two or three cinches and it'll be kind of like a Chinese finger trap. The more you stretch it, tighten it, the more it tightens against the wedges and the better it holds. And sometimes that's the only way you can grab something. But for something like this, I took a sling which has an eye on each end, goes down around and underneath, and then I took two endless belts, and I looped them together, and then I went through here. Now, if we thought this was gonna cinch up too tight, we could put a wooden wedge in there. This only weighs, you know, 300 pounds, so 200, 300 pounds, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Something heavy, I'll put a wedge in there. Uh, maybe I'll do that just to show you what I mean. And then it's really easy to just knock the wedge out of any knot and it provides you a way to get that apart because you can drive that out with a hammer. And now we'll just run this up. Now whenever you're doing this, it's important you have to keep your belts tight. You want to have them even and tight and you may have to go up and down several times to stretch the belts get them cinched really tight get a good agreement don't think it'll just work out okay because it won't um we went up and down for i don't know how many times really patient drum we dropped this off because the belts kept stretching and so we had to take another bite and another bite and another bite so now we'll do this while i run this up see if we can get video how this will look chain should reach the floor and walk this over as it goes up. Because if we just pick it up here, this will tend to swing that way, so we have to move it. Up. Make sure your cinch is really good, because if it's not, 
it'll end up being a problem. I like a chainsaw because I can go just a little bit at a time. And see now it's starting to pitch, so we have to be very careful. That's why I don't like push trials. Okay, so she stood up now. And this didn't pull down quite as much. With this light job, I'm not as worried about it. This should be a tight joint as well. Um, but by doing it this way, she can't tip out of the belts to the right or the left. So now we'll set this. I'm probably going to put a back brace on it so I can stand her up and uh, get her situated to take a few pictures. And then we'll lay her down again. She looks pretty good. There we go. Got her stood up. There we go. She's all stood up. I'm waiting for her big photo opportunity. I put a cleat on the bottom so the bottom wouldn't kick out. Looks like she's pretty close to plumb. That uh, armature is close. She's tipped a little bit, but nothing of consequence. And uh, just did a quick brace behind her to support it. And uh, I'll lay her down here just in a minute. This ought to frame up for a nice photograph. Think about how you present your, your work, your studio, your workspace. You know, um, we'll take a photo probably, you know, to this effect. And the astute people will notice her. And then they may notice a clay laying down in the background. They'll see tools. There's some chains hanging. Um, we'll, we'll have a good photograph, and I'll take a few, and then we'll uh, move on to the next part. This is what I was talking about with getting your slack pulled up. If I just went ahead and hoisted her, just cranked her right on up, it probably wouldn't go well. You got to get them tight and then work your way up. Get everything stitched up as high as it'll go. Make sure your stitched ends are close to the hook. So we want the short front to be a little bit shorter, so it tend to kick that way. So we have to keep track of the chain so it doesn't run away on you. And once we get it tension pretty well, I'll take the brace off the back, put it right there. Then we'll work this up. See, she's pretty stable right now. This is a little low. I wouldn't want to do much, but all I'm going to do is lay her down. So we'll run it to this other end like she was before. Approximately.
triangle from before. Gonna kick this way, so we could even come up here and foot her. But we're just gonna hold her because she's not that heavy. This is an ideal on something that weighs this little. We're not in a lot of danger. If this is a stone, that'd be tight. I'd go up and down until it was down. to keep straps clean it helps them from potentially fatiguing because you don't necessarily know if something's good or bad on a, on a belt so keep them clean and they usually have abrasion issues so where they've got fibers that show once they get abraded to a certain point, you're not supposed to use them. They won't pass the insurance or certification. Um, and but there's still stuff you can use them for if you know, depending on where you are, who you work for, you work for yourself. It's your own damn fault. So and this one I won't put on much stone this white one, but for some rigging like this where there's really not much weight involved, works great. All right, let's keep working. Okay, this video is about to the point I need to start wrapping it up, so I'm not going 30 minutes on every video because I don't want to do that to y'all. So I'll show you a little bit of what I use for rigging um, to, to handle stones. Uh, I've got a assortment hanging on the back wall everything from 
from very wide, very heavy belts to uh, one inch belts and, uh, and slings. And I want to tell you the difference between them, okay? This is an endless belt, okay? It's sewn together. There's no, you can't take it apart. And that's what I end up using most of the time. This is a, a lighter weight one. They'll have a ratings tag on them. Um, there's companies like Belts Unlimited in Elberton, Georgia, that'll make any kind of belt you want. Uh, any, they, they're really good. Um, and the belts are typically rated by their width. Um, this is a, a lift all belt. This is actually what's called a, a sling because it has an eye on each end. It's not continuous. Um, and like I said, these nicks in this belt, this was a freebie from a friend that said, I'm never going to use it and I won't put any amount of weight on it. But for something small like this, this model, you know, I showed you this model. I do this now. I can pick that up myself and I just, I shouldn't, you know, those days of Superman are past and I need to work smart instead of hard. But a lot of these belts you'll use and you'll put them on. And like I talked about stretching with this stone, you'll you'll have certain lengths and then you twist them to shorten them in order to to lift properly and so uh and some belts you know if you've got a if you've got a, a corners that are really heavy you can put pads now this is old fire hose okay you get an old decommissioned fire hose and cut it up for pads when you're turning the stone on the ground or whatever and you put those under edges and corners so they won't pop off you can also open that up and feed that eye through there so that it, it's a sleeve and it protects it. And if you've got an endless belt, you take your, your fire hose and you cut it in half, and then you, you feed the belt in there and it'll protect your hose. You can see that one. See the abuse that one took where something got on the corner? And instead of ruining a belt, it ruined a cheap piece of fire hose. That's a good deal for me. When we turn stones, we typically if we can, we use this sling. And this sling has two rollers or a yoke. And you can buy these in different sizes. The Trout and Holden has them and Bicknell Supply and Elberton has them. Uh, and then small machine shops will make them. This was forged by a machine shop that's no longer working in the industry down in Elberton back when I, when I first started. And, uh, the depending on the design some of them work really well but as you you can pick it up and you can turn the stone either manually or i'll usually use my second hoist at this point and just put another strap on it and use that to pull it over so i'm not under it you should never be under it one feature i did add to this is i welded on a washer and then i've got a hole drilled in the pulley so I can put a pin or a bolt in there to keep it from turning. And uh, a lot of times uh, people will just, they'll turn one belt or turn both of them and then it can't turn. But that's how the the yoke at, our, at Gary's was at the studio where I apprenticed. Um, I, I always prefer a trolley that's geared that you pull with a chain to make it move back and forth versus one that you push because once this weight's up on a stone, once it's up in the air and swinging, it's amazing how deceptive it is. It looks like it weighs nothing and moving it's not as much of a problem as stopping as it is. So you gotta really be careful because this will just crush you in a second. But uh, I don't use chains very often. Um, you can use a Lewis, which is another lifting device that has a, a sort of a wedge apparatus, but that's more for rough stone. And chains are just too dangerous around finished edges like this edge of the joint here. That's money right there. I can't bugger that up no matter what. So, um, but I do a lot with, with, with belts. And here's Belts Unlimited in Alberton, Georgia. Their belts have been in my studio since day one. And I've never had a failure. I trust them completely. So, uh, but that's something. I've got some extra chain hoist, just chain falls. But I've got a 10 ton and a 3 ton on my gantry. And I use the 3 ton whenever it'll handle it because it's a lot faster. But the 10 ton will pick up anything I need to pick up. 
um, and it exceeds the capacity of my crane, so it's 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 uh, way more than it's just a good deal. But anyways, a whole bunch of belts and slings. My name is Clint Botton here at Carolina Sculpture Studio. I'm a granite sculptor, talking about a little bit about rigging stuff and some of the equipment I use. Show you a demonstration on a model that I could pick up myself, but uh, just those days are past. So uh, lift safe because this will kill you. But anyways, this is a virtual stone carbon apprenticeship. Thanks for coming in.